वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस डी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग पेपर थर्ड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड दिस मॉड्यूल ऑन थॉमस हार्डीज टेस इट हैज बीन रिटन बाय माई सेल्फ इन दिस मॉड्यूल we will discuss thomas hardy his life his characteristics as a novelist and in detail the novel tess whenever we talk about thomas hardy the first thing that is associated with him the word prevalent comes pessimism people used to call him that he is a pessimist because he wrote about tragedies but it was not the complete truth thomas hardy was a poet by heart he wanted to write poems but writing poems was not a means to earn money so just to earn money he started writing novels he tried his hand in drama as well but his poems as well as his novels made him famous thomas hardy was an english novelist and poet a victorian realist in the tradition of george eliot he was influenced both in his novels and his poetry by romanticism especially by william wordsworth born on june 2nd 1840 in stinsford united kingdom he really contributed a lot towards the making of victorian literature he died on january 11th 1928 in dorchester dorset in united kingdom he perceived himself as a poet first and expressed that he wrote novels for financial gain eldest child of builder thomas hardy second and his wife jemima hardy thomas hardy had three more children to follow him the young hardy was deeply influenced by the natural world around him he was influenced because he was a deep observer he observed things and tried to express them in his work of art his novels have nature and natural surroundings hardy had a long life and in december 1927 he fell ill with pleurisy that is the inflammation of the lungs and on january 11th 1928 he died at max gate that was his home in dorchester on his death bed hardy narrated his last poem to his wife his heart is buried in the cemetery of st michael's church in stinsford accompanied by emma and florence his ashes were there in poets corner in westminster abbey london i quote some lines from thomas hardy so that you can understand his feelings he said there are accents in the eye which are not on the tongue and more tales come from pale lips than can enter an ear it is both the grandeur and the pain of the remoter moods that they avoid the pathway of sound unquote now when hardy started writing novels he chose some particular themes to write his novels on man's impotence against greater forces like nature society and his own impulses became a theme a shaken if not completely fractured view of the relationship between humans and god troubled him and so he wrote about it pessimism hardy prefers the term meliorism for his writings that is the belief that the world 
can be made better by human effort pessimism is only the thing that you are not satisfied with the world you see the negative side of the world but after depicting the negativity hardy had this element this faith that things can get better if human being tries sincerely emma gifford hardy emma gifford met the writer thomas hardy in 1870 when he was working as an architect their courtship inspired hardy's third novel a pair of blue eyes they did not marry until 4 years later on 17th september 1874 at st peter's church paddington london the ceremony was conducted by emma's uncle at first the hardy seemed to be a very happy person in his marriage but after some time they drifted seriously apart they had no children and hardy though probably physically faithful had a wandering eye after 20 years of marriage thomas hardy published jude the obscure which was controversial for its portrayal of victorian religion sexual mores and marriage emma as wife of thomas hardy disapproved of hardy's last novel because of the book's criticism of religion and also because she worried that the reading public would believe the relationship between jude and sue paralleled her strained relationship with hardy she died in 1912 and hardy mourned her forever it seems so the emma poems are among his finest poems now in 1914 hardy married florence dugdale his long time secretary he was 39 years older than her but their understanding their relationship had a different strain hardy died in 1928 he said poetry is emotion put into measure the emotion must come by nature but the measure can be acquired by art he not only said that he exemplified it another very famous quote from hardy is that is his philosophy as well this one sentence narrates the philosophy of hardy he said happiness is but a mere episode in the general drama of pain try to understand this thing that life is full of misery life is full of pain troubles problems happiness comes there but occasionally and man should cherish this happiness man should try to bring that happiness again and again in his life that was his philosophy of life in his novels and in in his life he believed that chance and fate they have very important roles to play chance means something that happens unpredictably without discernible human intention or an observable course fate implies an inevitable and adverse outcome in all his novels chance and fate play major role also in tess let me name some important novels by hardy in 1872 under the greenwood tree in 1873 a pair of blue eyes in 1874 far from the madding crowd then in 1878 the return of the native in 1886 the mayor of casterbridge in 1891 tess of the durverwells and 1896 jude the obscure now there are three categories of hardy's fiction some novels are the novels of character and environment some deal with romance and fantasies and some are novels of ingenuity imagination and creativity is there after harsh criticism of his novels 
Hardy tried his hand in drama as well. But finally, he moved towards his last love, that is poetry. His literary life can be divided into three phases. First phase, 1840 to 1870. It embraces his childhood, apprenticeship, his first marriage, unpublished novel and early poems. Nothing great appeared. Second phase, 1871 to 1897. It witnessed intensive writings and it resulted in the publication of 14 novels and a good number of short stories. Third phase, 1898 to 1928, Hardy achieved name, fame and criticism also for his novels. He abandoned writing novels and started writing poetry again. According to Hardy as a poet, poetry was his first literary love. He wrote poems from 1860s onward till near his death, completing nearly a thousand poems. Hardy is now recognized as one of the greatest poets of the 20th century. In 1898, Hardy published his first volume of poetry known as Wessex Poems. That is a collection of poems written over a period of 30 years. But here in this module, we are dealing with Hardy's novel Tess. His novels have certain features like sympathy for the peasants in an age of decline and decay of peasantry, nostalgia for the pastoral and patriarchal mode of life, man's life controlled by hostile, cruel, mysterious fate, and a pessimistic vein runs throughout his novels. Nature in his novels personified and symbolic like a character in the development of the plot like Edgar Heath. A good knowledge of folk ways, their superstition, peasants' feelings, it is also revealed in his novels. Now let us concentrate on Tess of the Durbervilles. The complete title of this novel was Tess of the Durbervilles, A Pure Woman Faithfully Presented. It was initially published by the British illustrated newspaper The Graphic in 1891 and in book form in 1892. Written in English, it had 592 pages and major characters were Alec Durberville, Angel Clare, Tess Derbyfield, John Derbyfield, Parson Tringham. The novel is written in a relatively straightforward style. Hardy separated it into four phases. Each phase is entitled according to what dominates it. So we distinguish the phase like the maiden, the second maiden no more, the rally and finally the consequence. Important tool of characterization is the names given to characters. Now it is not so that haphazardly Hardy has given names to these characters. The names also signify the attributes of the characters. For example, Tess Derby Field. Derby Field has the word field in it, which denotes the countryside, the rural side, the rural simplicity. So Tess was a rural beauty, a simple and innocent girl. Alec Durberville. Durberville has ville in it, which is French for city. Durberville also separates the D at the beginning of the name, calling attention to the herb part of the word. This could imply urbanity, that is sophistication, as well as the city life with which Alec is associated. Now take the another important character's name, Angel Clare. Angel, of course, suggests a divine goodness. That's why this is described by Tess. There was hardly a touch of earth in her love for Claire. She views Claire almost as a guardian angel. Claire is French for light. Angel prefers to concentrate on the spiritual side of love 
instead of physical love. Hardy says, for example, I quote, though not cold natured, he was rather bright than hot, less Byronic than Shelleyan, could love desperately, but his love more especially inclined to the imaginative and ethereal. So this way you find that all the characters, they just describe their names by their qualities. Hardy is so thoughtful in giving them their names, that is his characterization. We can consider Tess as a tragedy which belongs to society, which belongs to industrialization. But first we feel that is a tragedy of Tess, tragedy of Angel and Alec. After reading this novel, two pertinent questions arise. Who is responsible for the tragedy of Tess? And the second question, is Tess a pure woman or not? Why Hardy gave this subtitle to the novel? We can say that chance and coincidence play wider role in her life. Most of the times we feel that this time this should happen, but that never happens. An unexpected thing comes and changes the whole scenario. Now, Hardy subtitled this novel as a pure woman. Why? A pure woman, in order to express his objection against the prevalent morals of the Victorian society that considers oppressed Tess as a fallen woman. He faithfully presents Tess as an innocent girl pure at heart, but crushed by fate and circumstances. A girl from a working class becomes a victim of rape, leading to a series of misfortune including pregnancy. What are the standards to judge her purity? This is a question. This is a question not only in the novel. This is a question he puts to the society. He wants to ask that the woman who was raped, who got pregnant, there was no one to help her. She is supposed to take care of her family, her child, herself, without any means, without any support. And the other person who started loving her, her love diminishes as soon as he comes to know about her past. The man who could never realize that the rape which was forced upon her, how much pain it had given to that particular girl. But his love vanished as soon as he heard this past of Tess. So how can one say that she was a fallen woman? Hardy tries his level best to tell that the consideration whether a woman is pure or not cannot be given to such things like the physical relations she had with someone out of her own will. In the story we see that Angel and Tess, they meet each other, they fall in love with each other and they decide to marry. But as I told you, the moment he comes to know after marriage about her past, he goes away from there, leaving Tess alone. Now there is a second chance meeting of Alec and Tess. Alec finds her again and again persuades her to live with him even without marriage. In the ending, when Tess comes to know that 
he had deceived him again by saying that her husband will not come back again and other lies also she murdered her then she just fled from that place but ultimately captured and then she was executed as murderer he forces angel to marry her sister liza lu after her death this is the ending of the novel now let us see one by one this novel from the eyes of the angel angel sees tess on the village green on the may day but doesn't dance with her to become a farmer and not a minister like his father angel goes from farm to farm to get practical experience before buying his own farm he was at talbot thes dairy to learn about dairy farming when he meets tess they fall in love and he persuades her to marry him on their wedding night tess tells him about her past that he already tried by writing a letter to him but that letter never reached him tess tells him about her past on her wedding night after hearing this thing he gets so disturbed that he was not ready to accept tess he he is perturbed that the real tess is so unlike from his romanticized spiritualized version of her he leaves her at her parents house and goes to brazil there he gets very sick and almost at the verge of dying he realizes just how wrong he was about tess he finally gets back to england where he receives tess's letter begging him to come to her he catches up with her in sandbourne where she has already become alex mistress she comes to him and tells him that she has murdered alex they run away together to escape the authorities he manages to hide her for several days but they are finally caught at stonehenge and tess is arrested he loiters outside the prison in the winton cloister with tess's younger sister liza lu as tess is hanged before that tess takes a promise from him that he will marry her sister liza lu after her death and the novel ends with the tragedy of tess now various questions i will like to put before readers of this novel who does really cause tess's enormous suffering was it tess herself was it society was it her family was angel or alec tess is the live indicator of this horrific irony why she who is a victim of rape has to be hanged why such an extraordinary beauty is actually embarrassed of her body why she in spite of being an infinite source of the life considers her birth as the nightmare which she will have to sustain she is both the dedicated lover and the brutal assassin what could be counted as the reason of tess's turning from a victim to a killer from a killer into a victim again now tess is frequently seen to act with integrity and responsibility such as her sense of responsibility for her hapless family always she takes care that her family should have a home and a food her efforts to commend the other girls to angel her patient acceptance of angel's judgment linked to her loyalty resignation and renunciation all of which were regarded as female virtues by the victorians we should also consider her refusal to pity herself her emphasis for self condemnation Hardy does not deny that Tess has weakness but when Tess blames herself excessively the reader tends to defend her against herself Hardy was fond of Shelley What he said about Shelley is worth quoting I quote that of all men dead whom I should like to meet in the Elysian fields I would choose Shelley 
not only for his unearthly weird wild appearance and genius but for his genuineness earnestness and enthusiasm on behalf of the oppressed unquote now you can see all these things of shelley which impressed hardy in one way or the other he tries to present them in his novels also nature interest him for her own sake and his treatment of her is often poetic the use of coincidence and accidents is overdone and plausibility is often stretched to the extreme to conclude i will like to emphasize that hardy has presented tess not as an individual but as a type as a type of oppressed woman she is demanding justice not for herself but for all the women who are forced to bear this hardy has presented tess as a pure woman not as a perfect woman tess has got some flaws but her tragedy was more tragic then what she expected she could expect or she just deserved this novel is a beautiful novel which can put in the category of the feminist novels of hardy hardy just puts a question and just energizes the society to think about this particular question and find the answer that a woman is pure because of her body or a woman is pure if her integrity if her character is good and she always works for the welfare of others thank you for visiting epg patshala